All right, so before we even talk about the approach or running up, I wanna start with the start, okay? So right now we said that my starting point for a 12 step or six left approach is 75 feet, two inches, okay? So when I come down here, I've got my mark right there. I want the tip of my toe to be even with this line. So if you come in and zoom in right here, what I don't want is I don't want to have this line here and I don't want my foot to start like this because that actually is 74, eight, all right? So that's four, five, six inches in front. So that means I'm gonna be six inches in front when I take off and I'm gonna scratch or foul. So I want to be my tip of my toe right at that mark. So how do you actually get that accurately? Well, there's a couple different ways. For starters, you could look at that and you could hopefully find something that's similar. So what I would do is I would come over here, look down the line, and I would say, okay, well, I see this thing right here is in line with that from the side. Well, I can put my foot right behind that line. Another thing that people do is they'll come over here They'll put their foot right at the edge and they'll draw a line with their spike or they'll just put their foot straight out like that. There's a couple different ways you can do it, but the key is you don't want your foot starting in the middle of it. You want that toe right behind it when you initiate. Now, how you start depends on uh, you as an athlete specifically, as well as uh, your skill level. So we have couple different starting styles. You've got static and dynamic. I'll explain what those means. But you'll see some athletes, I'll give you some examples. You'll see athletes that start here, say they start with their, I'll start with my right foot. Say I start with my right foot and I jump off my right. So they'll go right here and they'll kind of lean in right here and then they'll kind of almost like a sprinters, right? And then they'll drive out, okay? So they're in that sprint stance, which is called a crouch start. Okay, so we've got the crouch start. The second common one you'll see is this, the lean back. So they'll come here up on the toes and they'll lean back. Some athletes might lean back here with their foot in line. Some might pull it out like this. What you don't want is to come way back here because then you can't even push out, right? So you still want to be pretty close in, but that's the lean back. That's still a static. So the first two are static. And there's a couple other variations of how people do this. But then you'll see the dynamic starts, okay? Dynamic starts are, that's still my mark. But you'll see people walk in and initiate, but they have a little bit of momentum coming in. Now you still have to try to be as accurate as possible, right? Because if you do the initiate walk in here, then you're gonna end up scratching. So it can be a little harder to be accurate, but it give you a little bit of momentum. So there's the walk-in, then you'll see the skip. So it's a step with one skip or two skips. All right. And then you'll see some kind of hybrid in between, or you'll see a jog. So here's the jog. And then finally, you've got right in between where you've got, they kind of jog, build up some speed, then they do a skip, and then they initiate. So they're kind of back here. All right, those are dynamic. Now, what are the pros and cons to each one of those? Well, the static, that's the crouch and the lean back. The benefits of those are it allows the athlete to be more consistent. You're always starting from the same spot and you can typically push out at the same force production every time, okay? Allows you to be at a good takeoff angle or launch angle. Um, so more consistent, more accurate at the takeoff board. What are the pros for the di this dynamic? Well, for starters, you have a little bit of extra momentum when starting out. Right, so whether it's the skip, you're already kind of moving. So you, you, you kind of have like an extra little bit of distance to build up that speed. The second thing that's really good or beneficial for the dynamic is that it can give you a little bit of confidence in your speed. 
So if you're starting from here, it can be, it can be kind of hard to build up that speed mentally versus some people like being able to already have some speed and they think that they just naturally can carry some more momentum. Also, if it's an athlete who doesn't typically have a lot of speed, starting here can actually really help. Um, but I don't recommend the dynamic for really anyone under college level or elite high school level. Always start with the static because you're less likely to be accurate. College athletes and elite athletes, they've been doing this over and over and over again, thousands of times. So they always know exactly how long it's gonna take, how far they need to push out to start to initiate the drive, okay? So uh, choose wisely, but I would typically choose a, a crouch or a lean back if you're just starting out. And we're on to the next one.